Here are some tips for professional voiceovers dealing with breaths. Of course, if you're a voice artist recording acting or character work for video games, escape rooms, radio plays, or training scenarios, breathing isn't a problem as such. The breaths and sighs and so on are part of the performance and of the characteristics of the actual character you're playing. That's fine. In fact, if you're recording one part of a conversation and another voice actor is recording the other part of your conversation at a different time and usually in a different studio, the more breaths leading up to what you're saying each time helps the audio editor as your initial breath goes over the end of the last words of the other actor, so it sort of knits together nicely in multi-track. It'll sound natural. But what if you're recording a corporate or training script where the client has insisted on a nice legato smooth delivery and you know your breaths, even at natural places at the commas or full stops, will be too loud? <gasps> Edit them out? No, no, no. The spaces in time in your delivery are there for a reason. To help pause the communication and to let information sink in. That's the whole purpose of commas and full stops. As the game begins, you must cooperate. Choose your adversaries wisely. Use the items and characters at your disposal to turn the battle in your favor. So you don't like the breath? Cut it out. Use your adversaries wisely. Use the items and characters at your disposal to turn the battle in your favor. No. So would you highlight the breaths in edit and silence them so you keep the gaps in time, but the breath has gone silent? Well, in between sentences and paragraphs, this can be okay to silence breaths if you have to. Maybe there's a script rustle or something. But it sounds pretty harsh and horrible to suddenly cut to complete silence at a comma point or a pause point in your script. It'll sound like the loudspeaker's suddenly been switched off. It just sounds weird, you know? If you are really worried about the volume and harshness of your breath, if it's a slow script while you're recording, you can try to move your head away from the microphone as you gulp a breath and then whip your head back again. But to be honest, there's no real time to do that at normal or fast speaking speed. So I suggest you record as normal and then in your audio edit, highlight the breaths on the screen, reduce the volume by say 10 to 15 decibels. You do this in Adobe Audition by highlighting the breath. You select effects, amplify and compression, and then unintuitively amplify. And then of course, choose a minus number to minus amplify. In other words, to fade the volume. So the listener still hears you breathing, but it's far more muted and more natural there. You must cooperate. Choose your adversaries wisely. Use the items and characters at your disposal to turn the battle in your favor. But what if you get sent a script to record that has very long sentences in where there aren't any natural pauses or commas to breathe in and you run out of air and you... <gasps> well, that's <clears throat> where you stop. When you've run out of breath, you take a massive gulp of air not caring how loud it is because you know you're going to hack it out in edit, but you've got to do it carefully. Like, for example, this. Similarly, China's trade with the EU amounts to $1 billion, most of which is seaborne and therefore has to use the Gulf of Aden Suez Canal route. The trick here is that when you start the second section of speech with a nice full lungs after your breath, you don't go at full power as it'll sound terrible like this most of which is seaborne and therefore has to use the Gulf of Aden Suez Canal Route. No, horrible, it sounds like an edit. So even though you've got full lungs, you need to match the exact intensity and tone to that of the previous section. Born and therefore has to use the Gulf of Aden Suez Canal Route. Now, breaths can be a real problem when you're recording a TV or radio commercial. Every split second counts. They're paying per second, right? You're dealing with a client who wants lots of words in the advert and thinks that more words will make more people buy their products. And you often end up with nonsense like this. It's on now, the big sale, the one you can't afford to miss. Doors open 9 a.m. The more you spend, the more you save. Call this number for details. 01611 80601, extension 2104, not open Sundays. Checks will not be on it. Where you have to speak insanely fast and even your breaths have to be cut out to get your read into 9.5 seconds or whatever the commercial has to be. Now, this doesn't apply if you're doing a directed session over headphones or live in a studio. But if you're self-recording at home a commercial and you have a fixed time to get it into, here are my tips if it's overwritten. One, never complain when you get the obviously packed script that's got too many words in. 
don't tell them, this will never get into 19 seconds, please send it back, or whatever. Because you'll probably be dealing with the production company who know it's overwritten. Don't tell them. But that's what they've been given by the end client or the agency above them in the production chain. Don't make yourself unpopular. In particular, if you're dealing with an advertising agency who sent it to you and they don't want to direct you, don't you dare suggest to merely take out a few words as every letter and nuance would have no doubt been argued over for weeks in their high-level script meetings. In fact, if you're on a directed session from an ad agency, you can hear them arguing at their end. You're probably not in vision. So you can probably go, I told them so, in your head. But you don't say it, all right? Two, record the obviously overwritten script you've been given as fast as you can. Just speak as fast as you can without losing clarity. When you're happy with a take, even if it's 25 or 26 seconds in duration, and it should be your 19 and a half seconds, save it somewhere safe. You may need it. Three, go through, cut the breaths out. Remember to only put cut points at the median line. Clean up the start and end. Save this file as version two, so you've still got the original. Four, still too long in duration? Well, then very speed it. In Adobe Audition, it's effects, time and pitch, stretch and pitch, right? Type in the time you need and let the software speed your voice up. It may sound terrible, but you actually don't care. You just need to prove a point. Five, save the file as version three. Then send it to the client. Then they'll hear it and play it back in the office and think, oh dear, well, it all fitted when I whispered the script under my breath in the office. Maybe there are too many words in it. So you simply get on with other jobs until they come back with a sensible, shorter script that will fit comfortably into the duration required. Doing it this way, without you complaining, shows you're a professional. They learn themselves the hard way. You can't get a quart into a pint pot. There's no such thing as small print in radio and TV ads. And what's more, you'll probably get paid twice as well. Hey, hey, everyone's a winner. Back of the net. I hope this has been interesting for you. More voiceover tips and whole courses on starting work as a voiceover at home, more advanced stuff, voice development, how to increase income as a voice artist, all at www.voiceovermasterclass.com. All the best and have a great day in your voice booth.